Hi, welcome back. I'm Ulm Svanström and this is my YouTube channel. special guest for you. We are meeting Tobias Allen. He was the design director at Mojang, directing the user experience of Minecraft. He was also a designer and developer at GitHub in San Francisco and was one of the very first designers at Spotify. A little bit mind-blowing. Today, he is a freelancing full-stack designer as well as a frequent speaker and teacher. Let's say hello to Tobias Alun. Welcome, Toby! Or Tobias Alun, as you're also known. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, despite the corona, or I don't, I don't have it, but no, it's... No, me yeah, neither. No. As we know. As we know. Yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here together in one room. Stay home. Stay home. Like we're not doing. This is a very weird time with the corona quarantine and everything, but this isn't your first time at the stay-at-home rodeo, oh, is yeah. it? No, 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 no. <laughs> I've been doing it a lot since yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah, you work remotely, don't you? I work you? remotely, and I have been doing so for the mostly for the last five years. Oh, really? Ish since 2013. That's not five. Uh, <laughs> I can do, I can do math, but I can also work at home. <laughs> But yeah, I've been working with, it started when I worked with uh, GitHub um, uh, remotely from Sweden and then been doing it off and on since, but mostly on. And what are your like, because I'm a beginner at working at home. This mm. is the first time I've ever done it in yeah. any extent. Yeah. Do you have any tips for me? Well, some of them are difficult, I think, to pull off in the middle of the crisis. Um, I think one of the first learnings um, that I got in a painful way was that I I didn't think I needed coworkers, like meeting them, seeing them uh. face to face. And and then it, it quickly dawned on me that that just drained my energy to not look at people. Oh. Like not in a cafe, but actually talk to people. So I I, um, I got a co-working space as soon as I could, which is now closed uh, oh. during this time. <laughs> so I mean, it's difficult to, to use that tip, but... Um, but I use it not to work with people, but to talk. Mm. So, so, um, so it's like a place to mingle. Exactly. Uh, and like go to events and see where, what's up, what, what are people talking about, which means I usually work from home until I get lonely. And uh. then I go into the office um, to make other people not work and talk to me. And then, <laughs> and then I go home again and do some more work. But that, that was something that I just had to experience that like mm. that was really painful uh, to just not have an office, not have yeah. a context. Yeah, I must say, I'm struggling with this whole stay at home, work yeah. at home thing. Not so much that I don't get things done, it's that I don't stop working. Yeah, like, there's, right. There's In, no yeah. leave. How, yeah. like, how do you um, box up your time? Yeah, I think it's, it's for me, it's also difficult to start. Hmm. Like, it's, uh, that's the two events that need to happen. And for, for starting, I, I have a very clear ceremony which is like go up, make coffee, eat breakfast, read a bit, and then I need to like put um, perfume and deodorant on to be oh. like, this is what I usually do in a normal day. And when you're going to the office. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I do that and then I go sit by my computer in my couch. But like it, it needs, it's part of my like Pavlos clock thingy to just like make me realize it's time to work. I do have a difficult time stopping too, especially now since I'm I'm working with GitHub again now um, as a freelancer. But they wake up when my day ends, yeah, and I can't do anything about it. So what's what's important for me, I think, is to realize that um, nothing has to do with time anymore when you're working remotely. Maybe mm -hmm. that's not true for everyone. Maybe a lot of people are in Zoom calls all day, and then you should stop working. Uh, but I try to put focus instead on like making a difference rather than containing my working hours to eight hours uh, straight. Right. Which is, is again. How does that mean? What does that mean? Like it practically? means practically it means if I'm tired, I sleep. I don't like sit by my computer and be like, I should work for three hours and then my day ends. Uh, I'd rather do something else, um, recharge my energy, and then put in two hours to get something done that's meaningful. 
and focus on the end result rather than putting in exactly eight hours. Um, so that could mean when we don't have a lot of sun in Sweden, I start the day by working a bit and then grabbing a coffee for two, three hours in the sun. And then it's going to be dark and boring anyway, especially now in Corona times. So then I might as well work late because it's actually better mm. for me that day. Yeah. Um, so, so it becomes maybe that's not like how you stop working, uh, evidently, but I think it changes the question from like, how do you stop at an exact time to mm. how do you use your time well? Yeah, that's a nice feeling because I think I'm pretty bad at it. Like yesterday, I'm not gonna lie, I had my first real like corona meltdown oh. where it was like, I'm I'm just working all the time and nothing is enough <laughs> and I'm just putting in more and more time. Uh, and my manager was like, now you go home, weekend time for you. <laughs> we, it'll be better. Mm. Uh, but do you have that like with people uh, holding you accountable to take time off or? Um, I mean, now as a freelancer, no, or mm -hmm. very little. Um, I actually do have some great managers that, that noticed that I was working late and like uh. pushed back, uh, which is great. Um, but um, usually as a freelancer, no, no. never, right? Um, they, uh, it's often the opposite. Like, we bought your time for a lot of money, so we're going to use it <laughs> <laughs> to the full ex extent. Um, yeah, you have... You have to set boundaries very, very clearly. I usually do it by booking myself a clear appointments with people. Ah. Again, not usable in, in these times, maybe. Uh, but there are the lovely, lovely uh, FaceTime hangouts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. I did play Yahtzee the other day with a friend. By She was in quarantine. Ah. So I bought her a Yahtzee set, physical one, lifted by her door. And then uh, I had one of my own, and then we, we did a Zoom chat where I threw some dices, and then she threw some dices. It's beautiful. It was really nice. And it was so, like, um, I, I got a lot of um, comments from friends where, like, why aren't you just using an app? Like, what's the deal? But it's it's. There's something so different. about the yeah. tangibility exactly. of having, like, a thing when everything you do nowadays is so digital. Yeah. And that's, should be effective or that's something. That's really, yeah. really sweet. Yeah. That wasn't. So, uh, you are in the midst of a pretty spectacular career, if I may say so. Mm. Uh, how, um, what is my question here? <laughs> how? <laughs> how? How? Just how? how did you? <laughs> Do you have any advice for people who are ready to take their next step in their career? Because, mm. I mean, you've worked for... Uh, GitHub and like Minecraft and like so many big well-known companies. Yeah. Uh, what do you? What are, what are your tips for people who are ready to move on to something else? I think the first tip would be to to try. I mean, <laughs> I, I I teach a lot at Hyper Island too and some other schools and so many. First of all, self reject. They don't even apply to the what most. Does that mean? As in. You see a position at a cool company like Spotify and you go like, mm, no, I'm not going to try. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that's not your internal voice, but that's that what ends up happening. Whereas... I've been there. I've been I there too. That. Yeah. And, but I remember um, I was stupid. I was here at this office actually 10 years ago, almost to the day. And I applied for... So I'm, I'm 31. So I was 21. And I applied for a senior position at Apple. <laughs> Weren't you at, like, yeah, that was pretty early in your yeah, career. That you was pretty early, yeah, that was pretty early, yeah. I mean, I was, I was at Hyper Island still uh, as a student. And uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm senior. I'm way older than I used to be. Uh, so, <laughs> <I love that. laughs> so why not try? And I remember I, I got an interview um, booked, but then I, I, they had to, I had to say how old I was, and they just canceled the interview. Um, but I mean, at least I applied. I yeah. mean, that's that's the Kudos. first step. Yeah. So so just do that uh, and then see what happens. Um, but I mean, then a lot of people do and nothing happens. Mm. And uh, I was at least very, very lucky to know some people at Spotify. Spotify was my first big like 
uh, gig mm-hmm. or my for, first full-time employment. And um, I met some people at Doberman who had contacts there. I, I had the luck to have been working with a nonprofit organization for five, six years where two of those in that org was also in Spotify. Mm. And I think that's just by pure luck, by doing a lot of random things that ends up somehow coming together, but you at least have to do a lot of random things. Try some stuff out. Yeah. Um, And I think um, I have a lot to thank, like that organization, which was an organization where we organized big events for Japanese pop culture. Really? And we did that for years uh, in, in Uppsala, and, um, which is north of Stockholm, um, a somewhat smaller city, like a student city. And we, uh, so every this single year... something you did before you went to school? Or yeah, you? exactly. And that's what like, really brought me into programming and design to begin with, because we, um, we had this IRC chat where we talked about and, and watched anime and, and, and read manga. Uh, and then um, someone noticed that I could like do some things in Photoshop, uh, uh, which quickly turned into designing websites. And then we didn't really know what was difficult or not. Um, so we just every single year built a new website for that event. We built mm-hmm. internal tooling for like scanning tickets and wow. uh, a payment system. Like it was for a bunch of 17, 16 year olds, way too ambitious, but we didn't know it was. Oh, so you just uh, like naively was like, yeah, let's make it. Exactly. Uh, and it feels like everyone in that organization ended up working with what they worked with inside that org. So interesting. Uh, so even one of the um, like laser experts who... Laser? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, yeah. actual laser. Uh, who worked on stage with like prepping the stage for, for the big events. He's, I think he's still with DreamHack now touring and setting up that stage wherever they go. Like the light rig. Yeah, exactly. Which is, if you think about it, especially if you go to um, a DreamHack event uh, and watch like a StarCraft tournament or whatever, it can be real ambitious for for esports, just that level. And it's usually because he's good. Um, Wow. But so like a lot of those people ended up at interesting companies. Some of them ended ended up at Spotify before me and I had the luck to then have a a way in a way in somebody to talk to because yeah. that really is the best way to like that's what ended me at this company mm. uh, is somebody I'd worked with previously it was actually somebody who had worked here it was like I think you should be here I'll talk mm. to some people mm. yeah uh, exactly yeah and, it's so valuable and just like talking to your network yeah and 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 being open with people you know that you're ready for the next yeah. step yeah is what I think lands you yeah. some of the yeah. funnest opportunities. Yeah. And I, and I, in that sense, like, especially if, if you should use this tip for something useful, I always tell people to like, one, go to a meetup, two, hackathons, mm. because you just, it's, it's a good context to get to know people because you're together for a long time mm. with a lot of the other participants. So not just to learn, but to network. It's just golden. Yeah. Uh, and connect, connect it, especially that corking space, but then also the hackathons that um, Confetti, Martinael, Yone, and, and everyone has been organizing has produced a lot of valuable moments for me, but also just great in terms of uh, building a network. Yeah, we met at a hackathon for the first time. We, we did. Yeah. yeah. Something I'm really curious about is your work setup. Like, mm. what, what are your day-to-day tools that you use in your job? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I've realized I, am, I, can't, I don't, don't do a great job at a laptop. Really? This is a weird setup for me. I mean, I, I've worked with a laptop for a long time, uh, but then I bought an iMac again. You could as well use a remote um, or a screen. external desktop. Yeah. Exactly. I, need, I want to pitch something that I see very few people do. It's you should have... Um, touchpad mm-hmm. and a mouse oh. at the same time because so often you need to use gestures but you also need to have a bit more control mm. over especially as a designer what you're doing and if you're I use Figma and if you use Figma I find myself a lot being in the situation where I need to like drag and drop something scroll some other thing 
and drop it there. And you need two hands. So having a touchpad and a mouse is just golden. So mm. so my like optimal setup is iMac, keyboard, touchpad, mouse. Perfect. Nice. Um, and then um, I do a lot of technical work. Um, so especially now at GitHub, we, um, we're a design team, but that like design at GitHub is very technical. It's not... How so? Um, they, they talk about designers as always being a full stack designer or, or an equivalent, as in um, you should be able to implement in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript the screen that you're designing. Oh, right. So it's not finished until you build it. Yeah, no, exactly. The, the process ah. is you design it first, then you implement it, and then maybe you get some help like from back end or someone jumps in and do, do, does something for you. But um, there's little uh, focus on a dedicated UX person being UX throughout the entire process. Oh. You switch roles often, or you as a developer evaluate the UX and UI uh, with pros and cons. Of course, yeah. but it's a very technical technical product, so I think it works for for that product. Cool. So, uh, do you want to show us on your computer? Like, could, what are the things yeah, that you, you yeah. jump between, like practically? Um, practically, I first of all, I I forget I use um, the not a terminal, but the GitHub client. I'm mm -hmm. biased. I used to work on this uh, <laughs> myself. Uh, before so cool, it, it, yeah, I love it. I mean, and, and that was fun. And um, I love the people who are still working on it. Um, but I, I think it's great. There's a lot of, I think, um, stigma almost around using a UI for GitHub or mm -hmm. Git. Uh, I mean, even beginners are pushed into the terminal because that's what you should do, uh, which is, stupid. yeah, stupid. stupid. So um, even a lot of people at GitHub use the GitHub desktop client. Uh, which I think is says something, um, and then my my typical processes, I I sometimes do some sketches by hand, uh, but I often jump straight into Figma to figure something out. Um, so just as a um, sort of um, case here, um, here's what my portfolio used to look like a few months ago. I think. Mm. Um, which which is clean and nice, and but I I liked when you scrolled down how it looked much more than the header here. Mm -hmm. It's I don't love I didn't like these words like sure maybe they represent me but they represent a lot of people in terms of branding it's not strong whereas here like how the topography the animations here they're pretty distinct. Uh, for for this blog and my style here, so I wanted to develop something for the header that just picked up on these cues and and use that for for this top part. Yeah, you're pretty well known for your animation stuff. I mean, Spin Kit. I, yes, I went yeah. to a, a conference in Australia and I saw people reference mm, your project beautiful. Uh, yeah. of like uh, custom beautiful loaders that you can just download and put in your. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. That's, uh, you can just take a look at them. This is, I think what happened was I did these and then I ended up on one of the just first Google results when you do like spinner. Ah. Um, so they're, they've been around for, before CSS animations were like what you used, the, when they were sort of experimental. And I produced some new ones that aren't as like seen yet, like this one, I really like it. Mm. it it's, it's basically mimicking an old animation from Yummy. It's Android or Microsoft or something. Yeah. I can't know. Uh, but some of these you, you tend to see a lot um, as they are modified. Um, but I... Um, no, but I do see your point on your on your website. Like yeah. when you got down, there were all these little beautiful little like micro yeah. animations yeah. that put a lot of attitude in there. Mm. So what did you, what did you want to do? Right. So I, I just wanted to add stronger visual elements and use animation mm. like it's weird to be a person that does a lot of animation and then you go to my website and it's just still mm. um, so I, I started exploring and I did that in, in Figma and I also have this thing where I, I have a third name 
um, which is Biaroma, yeah. which is, I like it. And it's like, it's my mother's name. And we're just four now, um, an entire world that has that name. And I like, I didn't, I don't want it to die. So no. I'm like, I'm working on slowly introducing it. Into, your, <laughs> into my website. I hope you don't get married because then it's like I know. Oh, there's gonna be so many names. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll just yeah. I, I was I think of sorry I to tab Ooh. for a while just to that that would work. Just, um, mm. But yeah, so I typically then my process would be to take a screenshot of my current site. Yeah. Edit out whatever I want not to be there and then play around. So here I I played around with um, just. A big object. I want it to be somewhat, um, I don't know, um, symmetrical at least, mm. um, and and pick up that bold style that I have elsewhere. This looks more like a band than anything else, uh, right? So even if it maybe works somewhat, it, it doesn't really work. Here I started playing around with. Um, I have oh, this old letters. old logo, right? Um, and just blowing them up. And I, I read this beautiful article in the Smashing Magazine book number six, um, I think, which is the latest one, about how they treated branding at Smashing Magazine. Hmm. Um, and, I, and I really like one detail, which was that um, they tried to find something that they had going for them already in their brand and just... M- blow it up and make it big and just use that throughout the entire experience. Huh. So rather than introducing something new, I started looking for like, okay, do I have something that In I could use? Brand. Yeah. And I've always had this weird logo. So I, I just started playing around with having that instead. Um, and I ended up going like towards this style where um, um, I'm just using, I'm introduced the name again, Biaroma, uh, but I'm using the old logo, slightly modified. And I tried here to add some smaller elements just for scale. Mm. Like instead of banana for scale, like small type for scale. Oh, otherwise, interesting. otherwise, this doesn't feel big. It feels clumsy and out of place. But mm. with some contrast, it, it looks better. Uh, and then I, at the same time, started iterating on the menu to like try to tie those two pieces together. Um, but this is usually where my process in terms of Figma ends. When, when I'm working with animation, I never do that very seldomly in any app that is not just a regular browser. Uh, I just use JavaScript or CSS. Oh, why is that? Um, I just find it easier. Uh, I would not recommend someone to do it unless they found it easier. Okay. Um, but to me, the, the, especially if you use uh, a third-party library, the syntax is clear and very easy to change. And often, especially when working with interactions, I think it's just easier to manage the code in the end rather than in an app. Huh. Um, but so um, process-wise here, what happened was that I exported all of these um, SVGs, added them into my um, site, um, and then I started animating with a library called AnimeJS, which is the go-to uh, thing that I use for, for all animations. Mm. And it's, it's pretty lightweight, it's performant, and the syntax is just clear and easy to work with. Um, so uh, this is how it looks, and uh, oh no, this is how it looks today. Um, when you enter, and and I did end up iterating somewhat on the style here. So there's no solid top like layer; it's all just um, outlines. But that happened. That iteration happened in code when I was animating and, and iterating. Um, and then, can you just switch between them once again between mm, the, 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 the finished and yeah. the before? Yep, and then the, and. Ooh. With the animations. Nice. Uh, and, and it's not fully finished here. I, I'm still working on adding some like smaller elements for scale and working this style into this menu here, for example. Um, but again, the process is pretty quickly jump into high def, f- for better and worse, um, in Figma, and then jump back into um, implementation just 
play around with it. And, and I think I, it's just easier for me, but I can also think of the details there more realistically. And I How's get that? further. I, it's, for me, this is, here I can start to think dynamically and think about how you're using that, whereas I get stuck usually in like how it looks like statically inside Figma, right. more so. So one small detail here is that um, what, what I did here in this exploration was to introduce a different background color. So mm. it's, it's not purely white. It's it's a like slightly warm yellow oh, color, right? right? I see. And and I just thought that that worked better for um, f with this red and like slightly brownish color that I have here rather than pure black. Um, but that's gonna mess with everything else on this page. Um, but when I, as soon as I bring into a browser, I can start thinking about that element dynamically. So what happens here in the implementation is that as soon as you scroll down, actually, that fades to white. It just um, solid white. And um, so rather than changing the colors further down, you want to keep the warmth at the top, and then that goes away. Yeah, and it's just because it's so difficult to manage. It's more difficult to manage uh, that sort of yellow backdrop because I might want to use the same color almost here mm. at some point. Um, but um, I get a more realistic view of how it's going to feel like and work if I iterate on that inside a browser and actually do scroll up and down and think about like, did you think about it? I don't want anyone to notice. It should just feel kind of natural. Nice yeah. Relax. Yeah. Um, and I just like uh, spending a lot of time with polish while I'm interacting with a site and like feeling like does it does it make any sense mm. and also here for example I, I wanted uh, the um, the edges of the T and the B to cut through the O's Oh, um, so you can see it through yeah I'm not sure exactly why but I just wanted to be there and then it's difficult to know if that scales well if you're not in a browser and changing things and, and mm. playing around with it. Uh, so just like to jump into the browser pretty early. Mm. Uh, How has that changed your way of crafting things, do you think? If you think back to a time where you would... Or have, has there ever been a time where you were a d hand over, here is the finished design in a design file type of designer? Um, Maybe in some context, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it sometimes depends on where the developer wants to pick up too. So uh, when I was um, early on at Spotify and I worked a lot with uh, Nevin, um, who was then the, like, the iOS developer, um, he liked playing around with animations and he had a good feel for it. So we would often just make something real quick together, maybe almost in, in Photoshop, Photoshop, and then, <laughs> and then um, maybe I send over the files, and then we would iterate together. So th it was a proper handover in that sense. Um, but he had a really good feel for it. He knew how to animate well, and then so we would construct them together mm. in code-ish. Um, so um, at Spotify, there was a lot of proper handovers, especially since I think for at least many and, and me, um, it's more difficult to learn iOS development than learning web. Mm. Um, and so how has it changed you as a designer now to be so involved in the craft of building it as well? Yeah. Has it changed your design aesthetic any of it, anyway? Um, yeah. The question, yeah, the question is how and, and in which ways and when. Like for, because sometimes it feels like I, the, the main thing that's changing is given which tool I'm using, how does it change? Mm. Not like my personality, but yeah. like when, I, when I'm in Figma, I design a certain way. When I'm in Photoshop, I design a different way because um, it's a bit more, or at least for me, encouraging the tool encourages me to use gradients and shadows more so in Photoshop than in Figma. Right. No, I, I, I totally see what, what right. you're getting at because I'm the same. Uh, mm. Since starting to use Figma full time, 
I think like I've always thought in motion, but um, my tooling has never encouraged me to mm. do it. So that has always been a, a discussion that happens later, yeah. like with developers. I'm talking like, no, it should be more like a whew, mm. than a. Mm. Yep. Uh, yep. Exactly. The, <laughs> the language of animation is silly. Yeah. But um, and and now I have tooling that encourages me to just do it myself yep. and play with like transitions and and everything. Yeah. So. It is. It is a fact that mm -hmm. tooling changes what you make yeah. and the outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And but what I'm thinking is like, how has that have some of those parts propagated into my like personality and how Ooh. I think? Um, and I think um, to at least the planning stage of something, absolutely, because I, I think I often, for better and good, when discussing a project see like where are things going to be difficult mm -hmm. what can we do easily given what i know about animation how it, we're going to execute it and then i'm going to push or pull the project towards different aesthetics depending on what i think is difficult or not ah. um, which sometimes i think is very pragmatic right it's going to make the the us or enable us to spend more doing something that I know is gonna work well and look great, yeah. rather than going uphill or against the stream. But sometimes it's just that I don't know how to do something well. I haven't tried it. I haven't, so right now I'm trying to work more with WebGL because it's just, you can do some amazing things with it, but I have a difficult time pragmatically thinking about it because I don't have the technical expertise. Whereas I think I would almost be better at envisioning things um, if I ignored my technical abilities and just thought from a design point of view about WebGL because mm -hmm. then I could dream and then figure out a way to do it. But right. now I'm trying to approach it from like, what can I do? And the answer is nothing. <laughs> so, I do, <laughs> so I do nothing. Because um, that's, uh, when you're a designer and you want to get into coding, I think that's sometimes a restraint. Uh, for, mm. for me, at least, when I start experimenting with JavaScript, in JavaScript, I'm a total beginner. Mm. Uh, like, if I'm trying to design something while I'm coding, it's not, it's going to be very limited. Yeah. It is one div mm. on the entire screen, and maybe it has a gradient, and that's yeah. the design. Yeah. There's, no, there's like... Yeah. And I, I can just feel I can I can become a worse designer if I start to design in code without thinking about it first, mm. which is not necessarily just how the tool changes you, but somehow it, that everything feels like a bit more segmented and finished, and the only thing you could do is like change colors or the size of yeah. things, whereas as soon as you approach something from a design point of view, you're like. Fuck everything. Let's let's think about it from from the optimal point of view. And then it could end up being that you don't change a lot of things, but at least you you um, walk away from the current like just order of elements, for example. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I try to clean the project up in code, it's going to be very superficial and be like, I I removed a border and it's not bold. Yay, the, the text. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's, it's not going to make any difference. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I think like some developers who think design is difficult, it's just so they're approaching it while being in that context. Mm. And as long as they jumped over to Figma first, they that, that would solve the problem for them. Yeah. Mm. Oh, interesting. So when you're doing both designing and coding, does that change the timeline of a project? Or like... Does it take longer or shorter or? Sometimes way faster. Really? Uh, absolutely. Um, in terms of maybe, I mean, it could, it could go from um, start to finish faster if you threw five people on it mm. where you could work together. But I mean, in terms of uh, efficiency, like how much time slash money are you spending to solve the problem? I think... Um, it's, it's better or more optimal when you can do both. And often um, it's just that I don't need to do that handover. I don't spend any time on that. And so um, the project could be, if I get a brief from someone, to first jump into the code, change things around, does it work? If not, jump over to Figma for an hour, jump back, 
try it out. And, and just iterating between those two contexts in that way would require a lot of communication and time mm-hmm. and, and friction if you were more than one. So in that sense, small fixes especially, like touch-ups, way quicker. Mm. Um, longer projects, probably about the same. Mm. Um, as soon as you involve stakeholders anyway, you're going to have that sinking and whatever. So then I think it doesn't really matter that much. Mm. So if you want to, if people want to learn, or designers want to learn how to code, where do you start? Mess around with the CSS animations, as, as in two different things. And then you can animate either with JavaScript or CSS. Mm. Um, and it's just so much fun seeing something moving on screen. Uh, so I would, just, I would just start there. Yeah. Um, and there are absolutely courses both on Udemy and um, uh, Treehouse. Hmm. I think there are some other, the best sites, probably. Awesome tip. Thank you. So being good at many things, how do you approach like <laughs> learning something new? Or what are, what are the benefits of being good, a little good at a, or a lot? Yeah, in your you're case? right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, you hear the opposite advice a lot, especially in school. Like, pick a thing, be great at it, become an expert. Like, don't dabble with too many things. Mm. And, and I've always been an advocate for, for the opposite. Dabbling. Uh, <laughs> do everything <laughs> as much as possible. And, and I think we, we just um, make arbitrary limits and boundaries where we think we for shouldn't ourselves. go. Yeah, for Put ourselves. Put ourselves in little boxes. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of people say, I, I can't code or I have a difficult time coding. Or, or like, of course, you're going to have a difficult time coding if you don't try it. And you, if you don't practice, yeah. I think I think it's such a uh, putting, giving yourself allowance to have a learning mindset, mm. and be like, no, I'm actually going to try this for the first time. Well, it can't be perfect. I no, shouldn't even be good at no. this point. Exactly. Yeah, be shit at things. Yeah. Unless you're shit at something, you're probably not pushing yourself. Right. Then you're just doing what you already know. Yeah. Um, and how do you how do you grow as a designer if you're only doing things you know you're good at? Yeah. You don't. You don't. Probably so don't. yeah, that's it. No, uh, <laughs> no. But so I, I think um, for the first step is to just start doing way more than you are and be be broad. Um, what are you terrible at right now? What are you I'm doing? I'm terrible at machine learning, and oh. I'm trying to not be terrible at machine learning. And it's something that is far out of my reach, at least from the outside. If you look at like what people hire me to do, um, I I don't know a lot about machine learning but I find it so fascinating Mm -hmm. and so um, interesting just if you look at the field from the outside the velocity of of just change and what you can do now that you couldn't do four years ago is just astonishing Mm -hmm. and so I had a friend who said um, who's a product manager and he said just suddenly in a message like I don't think I am relevant in five years unless I learn machine learning. Mm. I'm like, I could, I could vibe with that. I don't agree, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm going to use this opportunity to, to align with you and then let's just learn machine learning together. Um, That's an excellent idea to, to learn something new with someone. Yes. What a great tip. Because yeah. I think a lot of the time when I find myself interested in something, I don't have anyone there to talk to mm. it about. Yeah. Or like I don't seek out that community straight away. Yeah. And then you're just by yourself being shit at stuff. And that's not very encouraging. No. Yeah, exactly. And, and you need to have someone, I think, a good teacher is probably someone that understands your level, level of expertise slash ignorance in the beginning. <laughs> and so, so how we study is we're like ignorant together, which is perfect because then we can watch a movie and, and then pause at a time and be like, did you understand anything? Like, no, me neither. Okay, great. Let's go what, back. Yeah, yeah, let's go back. What the hell do they mean when they say this? And then talking about it together and, and just trying to figure out and explain what you don't understand, it's so valuable. Um, so I, I found that immensely useful and then encouraging too because we're as bad, both of us. So it's, that's great. Hopefully mm-hmm. it doesn't study like when I'm not there. <laughs> no cheating. Cheating, exactly. <laughs> um, 
But I think like uh, going for multidisciplinarity, but not even thinking about it like that, but like going for range and playfulness, it's so useful and fun. And that's usually what pushes me, which sometimes make me not great at some things. Um, I definitely have a tendency to like drop certain directions when I think like it's not as fun anymore. Mm. Um, like I, I don't spend a lot of time exploring new functions in Figma. Whereas I used to spend hours as a kid watching every tutorial I could find on Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And I could use any shorthand that I could because I just found it interesting. And I don't right now. Mm -hmm. But instead I'm looking for a range and pushing myself in completely arbitrary directions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me that's the way of surviving like fatigue too mm -hmm. over time. Just like not, like we have a friend who, who went into potatoes instead of design, which, which I... Just I, a small little leap yeah. from <laughs> being a visual designer to, to potatoes. potatoes. Yeah. Uh, and, and I love him. And, and, I, and I look up to that a lot in so many ways. Um, but that's a way to, to avoid fatigue too. But it's an extreme jump. And of course, it took him a lot of time and dedication to be able to make that jump. But in a similar way, I think I'm trying to just slightly go to the like adjacent possible mm -hmm. that's just just at the brink of my current expertise and explore that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then hopefully that leads me to not having to like take three years off and study before I can try it. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Thank you so, so much for having this conversation with me today. Thank I've you for had me. a blast. Me too. And um, with that, thanks for today. Bye. Bye.